yes welcome to my youtube channel called revit guys where we discuss all things revit for architects so if you're an architect looking to improve your skills and knowledge with revit you're definitely in the right place so our channel is dedicated to uh, providing valuable content that will help you get the most out of revit software with our step-by-step -step guide tutorials on how to use revit from beginner levels to advanced techniques uh, we'll cover it all so subscribe now and join us on our journey to become revit experts yes so we start wasting your time let's get down to what we're here so for our first class or our first class of the series so this is just so this series will be um will be called um revit for construction documentation like having your document in a professional manner for construction documentation that's or working drawings as the case may be so this will just be about setting your template the next class will be you can just maybe pick a design just develop it just do a small modeling then we'll set view templates we'll set series how to organize your browser that is your browser organizations will come here then we'll also go to print settings so this will just be taking your drawings from novice to pro so how to present it so that it's legible and it's good for um it's good for contractors or contractors and everybody to read you know so just taking your drawings to a good level of detail so first we would want to create our template like i said earlier and to do that is so our template is you know having to have your own preset that works for you you know, uh, say for instance, you want a particular font, you want a particular symbol, you want a particular annotation tag and all those stuff. So you want to create that and personalize it. So the reason why you do that is because it makes it work faster. So that next time when you want to design, you just pick up the file, load it, and everything is there stored. And also if you want someone to help you do your work and it looks like it's one person, once you give him the template file, he can work with that and everything looks like it was drawn by one person. Also, um so before we get here i had already moved forward let's start again okay so if we come to new would uh, so i'm using revit 2020 so i hope to install 2022 sometime in the future but for now we can work with this so if you go to new under the template file choose architectural template so we can either leave it as project or project templates uh, but since we are creating a template because whichever one you choose that you can always save as you can always you know change it so we'll do project template so we'll open that then the first thing we'll do is that if you don't like this you can change it so it's just basically changing all revit presets because personally i don't like using anything revit default from the text to the symbols i leave some of them but most of them i'll change so we'll just try to do that so if you do not like this there's a way you can change it so i like the one that's kind of round and you know looks finer than this this looks basic so if you click on this and you go to edit type under the properties panel your properties panel sometimes can be here it could be under this or they could be here if you go to edit type and you come down to your um call out elevation yeah this you can change it no not this sorry if you go to your elevation tag you can change it to circle with number and details I, I, let's see what this is i can't remember so if we apply it voila this is what i like no but i don't like the the text with it so we'll remove that uh, maybe we'll just do the field arrow yes field arrow is fine so yeah this is what i like so you do that so now what we've done we've changed this so you can change the size of this if you don't like so if you want to do that most of the things we'll be doing will have to come down to this drop down menu families so once you change that next thing we want to do is we want to change the this i don't like this i want to change the text i want to change this as well this is your levels uh, annotation your symbol so if we come under families and we come under annotation symbols we will go revit has this mmm before everything so i don't know why so that's how we met it if you come under m levels 
think circle let me just find out so if you want to find out what you should edit if you come here and you go to edit type you can see what you're looking for so this is what we should edit so presently it has these two guys so there are two ways you can do it you can edit this to what you like or you can go to your revit library and you know load in a family that you like and work with so i already have a revit family which i can share with you guys so um I go to my library, my Revit library, and yes, so uh, this under annotations, architecture. So you some you want to put the thumbnail at picture so you can see what you are working with. So one the elevation tag. So I love this. Yes, this. So this is what they're using presently. So I want to change it to this. So if I drag it into my project it loads and to tell me can't view this kind of element in this view and stuff like that so if you go to please if i'm going to fight you can tell me because i'll be reading the comment session please comment on how i can make this better and clearer for everyone to understand so if you go to level if we click on the levels the annotation i will come here because we've loaded that in the symbol, we can see it. So I want the triangle, uh, triangle spot, sorry. This apply and okay. So it's here. So another thing is that depending on the scale, this might be too big and all. So, um, if I want to edit that, if I come here, I right click and I edit brings me no, 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 no. Sorry. Um, Pause this one because this guy's name again. Let's see. Pa, 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 pa. Level head triangle spot. So we have to look for level head triangle spot. Yes, so um, level head triangle spot. Yeah, okay, good. So we found it. Go to edit. Um, so I like to use text that are. Uh, First of all, if you're using one text, use it for everything. Maybe the only place you might want to change it, maybe for spot height or something that you really want to draw focus to. But basically, I like to use the same text. So there are a couple of texts you can use. So by rule of thumb for choosing text, it has to be somewhat condensed because you want it to fit into tight spaces. Those tight spaces like toilets. Sometimes, you know, you don't want your text to come out of the room. So you want it to be condensed and you want it to be like serif all the letters showing should not be too stylish you know not draw too much attention and you want it to look good in regular and bold so for that my preferred text is one swiss let's go i don't know even when i see that one <laughs> so it is yeah swiss where are you come 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 uh, yes so it is swiss 721 ltcnbt so for now i'm just showing the text i can do with the size i can deal with the size later so um do i want it bold uh okay i don't know yet so let's leave that yes so this is the text so you see it's condensed it makes it smaller and no matter the scale it is very visible yes so if we do that then we can load into our project overwrite the existing version and its parameter values thank you so yes we have this Okay, so maybe I want to make it bold. Yeah. So if we come here, because we didn't close it, because I had a feeling I'll make it bold. So maybe you can make only this bold. So for that, you duplicate. If you're familiar with Revit, you know that this key is very important to always duplicate stuff so that it doesn't mess up with the one, the default, and it is specific to that one we want to edit. So I just want to make this bold. So I duplicate this, lay it as 3mm2. I will make this bold. Then we can make it slightly bigger so that it is more obvious. Uh, good. So we, we might take it up a little bit so that the spacing between this guy and this guy is the same. You know? Yep. Good. So we can load this in our project. Good. Yes, exactly. So this looks good. And um, so after that, let's. Uh, so we'll be just adding a wall because I want to 
also give the wall a particular a particular graphics view. But why I did the wall is because I want to call the section. It's not necessary, you don't live anyway. So I want this. So yeah, this is one of the few symbols that I like. I don't tamper with this. What I would do is because since I'm changing all my annotations, I would just change the text. So if I go to, so like I said, if you want to find out what this symbol is, the name, if we click on this, and we come to edit type, so that we know what we're dealing with. So we're talk, we're dealing with section head, fields, section tail, fields. Good. So if we come here, M section head, fields, yeah, so this is what we're editing. So I just want to change the text to our Swiss text. So if I click this, yes. So under the text font, we click Swiss. Yes. Aha. 721 LTC and BT. Good. So we can leave this size for now. And we can do it all those later. So we load into the project. Template 3 project. Alright, existing. Yes, so you can get rid of this. Uh, so, once again, we've gotten the view, we've gotten the elevation. Then, um, okay, so we need a room. I remember why I drew the wall now. So, for the room, definitely we want that to be amongst the ones we change now. So, we want to change the text and the look. So, personally, I like. So if we go to edit family and we'll click on the room. So in terms of hierarchy, this will definitely be bigger the room name. But I also want this guy to be. So when you open this room and you want to show, for instance, the the um what's it called now? The view annotation, yes, so the guidelines and sketch, whatever. If you show this and you take this. It shows this. So what this is, what this means is that when you are putting your room, so this is like the center of your, of your cursor and where this annotation will come to. So I want this guy. I like it. So you can do whatever you want. What's it to? I, I always want this to be on top and I want this to be at the center. Yeah. So I want this to be here with this. So maybe I could just write or I could just draw. I just put somewhere some of my um, graphics, some of my graphics uh, templates. So if you like it, you can adopt it or you can create your own. It's not hard. So maybe I'll just create like a PowerPoint. I'll put a link in the description so you can download it. I normally don't use volume. I don't know. I've never had the chance to use volume. So I use volume when I have some RFIs as request for information from the QS. So, but for now, you can leave that like that. Uh, at least, but I use room numbers a lot and area so what i want is that i want this to have its own text so first of all i'll give you the text that i said i use this uh where are you yes I'll apply it then i would okay so i like this to be slightly smaller so say Eventually, when I use scale one hundred, these figures are usually bigger. But when we are doing the design development, we would adjust all of that. So this is just basically going around and touching um, the view template. So three point, sorry, make this two point say eight. Apply it. Okay. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, affected all of them. So I was supposed to duplicate. So I'll duplicate this. Yes. Make this 2.8. Okay, it's, this is fine. So, room name, I'll make it bold. Then, this, I'll make it, I'll duplicate this. This is the area, I'll make it say 2.5. Now, okay, it's just take it up a little bit closer. Then, another thing that I do sort of creates that visibility because it's smaller. I usually change the color and I use red because it stands out. So you can use red, you can use blue, you can use any color. You can leave it black, depends on you. So make it red and uh, I think for now we are good. 
so the spacing looks good let's just see and we load it into the project template project and we okay to write existing version good so this looks good we might have to adjust this uh, background lines and all but for now we can do with this so i want to change this to only show room number i'm sorry yeah room number is shown in room area so we okay it so we are good so we adjusted the room it takes our text so you can you get just what i'm saying so another thing that we want to look at so if we come down to our family under our annotation symbols if we click on the drop down so we can see everything coming out so uh maria to our call out head so we can go to the call out head edit it i like this i like this way this one comes out so the only thing i'm going to change is just the text to our chosen text in case yours yes uh ltc mbt which is fine for voilà. that right there Loads to the project, we're happy with it. Override the existing version and parameters. Yeah, so what again do you want? Change center line is usually good. I like that. So for dot tags, that would be when maybe we can leave this now because I would like to know how we do our door, door tags and because mine is a little different. So, but for now, let's just change the text. So if we did this, this is fine. We just change the text to carry our Swiss. LTCNBT. Thank you. This is fine. We'll load into our project to our template and file. Good. So you just you, you get the GC begin to go around all this. So grid circle. Let's even find out the grid that comes out so we know the one we are dealing with. So if you want to get your grid, if you go to architecture, grid is somewhere around this day. Uh, datum or datum, I don't know, whatever pronunciation you guys like. So, yes, so if we draw this, so let's click it to know what we are changing. So, grid head circle. So, grid head circle. Let's see. So, you edit and change the text to uh, Swiss. Sorry, Swiss. LT, yeah, good. 5.5. All this, all these sizes will definitely change when we want to do our design. So, another thing I like doing is I like making this bold and give it a different color blue, red. I don't know, I just like using red because it starts out. So, yeah, so this is it. So, we'll load this into our project template 3 for now. Override this. So you begin to get the sense of what we are doing here. So we are setting our parameters for, or sorry, our template and our graphics for the project. So this looks, I mean, when we are done with this thing, you will like the result. So grid, we've done grid, we've done level, we've done level head. Yeah, we've done level. Material tag, uh, I hardly use this. So not arrow. Let's see what the not arrow is uh no 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 i don't use this guy so there's a guy i use that's yes so this is what i use so if we go back to our library which i said i will share we can use this guy so this is what i normally use there are a couple of them you can edit and make it look like what you want but i like this so i bring it in the project and um so it is this is the knot I like. So the only thing I will do is that I will change the text. So this knot arrow five. So if you come here, knot arrow five. If you go to edit, this text will just change to our Swiss. Yes. Apply. Bold. Good. Load into the project. It. so you want to let this because you don't need it now but if you want to bring it out later if you go to annotate sim symbols you have it there most of the symbols you are using they will bring it here so let's check what on which other symbols in the presets okay so you have center line and all those stuff 
So I'll show you where we use the center line. It's mainly for room, room drawings, room elevations. So yeah, so this is where we are not arrows to revision tags. Uh, let's see what this revision tag is saying. So if we did this. So, so you, if you want to tag this, you can TG, short key for tag, click on TG, and tags it. So the only thing we'll be changing is the text. I like the shape, nothing bad with it. The triangle is good. So edit, click on this, we'll come here and change the text to our Swiss. This is how they want it. Hmm, interesting. Then once again, load into the project. How from this getting so room tags. I do I hardly use this room tags and all. Section. I think we've changed the section. We liked what it looked like. Span direction. That is for structural guys. Elevation, spot elevation, cross here. So let's even see the elevation that is here. Under annotate, if you speak on spot elevation, it's not going to give us anything because this guy, it um, has to work on the floor. So you have to draw a floor there. So let's draw a floor, you know, just a random floor. Uh, don't worry, we'll do with all this later. Okay. Okay. So on the spot elevation, put this guy. You know, I don't want the leader or whatever to show. So put this guy. So some days I like this, some days I don't like this. So today is one of the days I like it. So let's check what this guy is. This guy is called um it's called M Spot Elevation Target. Yes, M spot elevation target. So we are start M spot elevation target. So I did. We want to change. Okay, so I don't think this is where we change the text. Mm, no, this is not where we change the text. So let's cancel this. No. So this is where we change the text. Come here. Ah. So we want to make this our Swiss. Yes. Then we want to make this transparent. Then we also want to make this. I, I feel like this text is too far from this line or this leader, as Ravi calls it. So in order to do that, we'll come here. We'll make it 0 0.5. That's what I like using. Not bad, or zero point one, and I feel it's too far from the symbol, so we can make it. The text size looks good for now. Um, so if we scroll down to text access from symbol, we can make this say. Let's see what one point five looks like. No, let's say three. Ah, uh, so 3.5 should do it. Yeah, this looks good. Okay. So this is fine. So like I said, today's day that I usually like this symbol. So some other days, I use this symbol, spot elevation field. Because, or what I do sometimes is that for plants, I will use this because this is uh, like universal. Then for, say I'm in a section, let me go to a section or elevation. So when I want to now use spot elevation, so maybe I can use, I can use the other type, like the other triangular type. So it depends, it depends on my mood. This guy is too close. So let's see for. Four point five. 
because I wonder why you get too close to this guy. Oh, let's leave you at 635. There you are. Uh -huh. and five, thank you. Yeah, so this looks good. Yeah. So some days I use it, some days I don't use that. Like I said, today's the day I feel like this is okay. But maybe I could change it later, depending. Because I don't know, it just looks too. Sometimes it might look too busy. So that's why I don't like it. And it's very mundane. Like I said, most Revit symbols I don't like. But so that I don't waste time. So, where were we? We are on spots. We are on spot elevation. So, stair landing tags. All this I can leave now. Maybe when we have the stickers, we can edit that. But then, hope you, you get the gist of what we are doing. So view title is something that's important when we load our, do we have any title block? Yeah, we have a title block in the project. So if we right click on sheet and we load a new sheet, uh, let's save the project now. So we'll call it, um, Revit guys templates so I should stitch in so I could share this with everybody in case you want if you want you can just let me know in the comment section but I can assure you that you will have to do some other work when you are working with your scale you might have to reduce some have to increase some so this title block I don't like but we're not talking about title block now uh, so we can leave this now I just want to put something in so that we can change our view title. So, yes, this I, I like without the circle. So what I normally do is that, so you can leave it, but like I said, if you're leaving it, make sure you change the text. Don't forget that. Very important. This is where we are. Correct. Good. So change the text to your Swiss the actual two Swiss I like there's one I think it's this two I'll be this I don't know sure but let's use this one one we'll be using so that is fine this changes so this is still the same we we'll change this to our Swiss BT something something this I need to know this text so I can tell somebody in case somebody asks so yeah, so I want this to be bold. This is usually fine when it's bold. I mean, you can do what you want. It's up to you. So another thing that I change is that. So if I press VV or VG, I want to remove that circle because that's a question. It's just. So I usually remove the circle. Then I bring these guys closer to each other because I don't see any reason why they're so far apart. Then I draw a line like this. Just use this, um, use the temporary text to get somewhat the level of that guy. Yes, so I move this guy a little bit closer <laughs> to be more intimate. Hold control so that I can highlight both of them. Move them closer as well to just give them a, so, yeah. What am I doing? What did I open? Oh, I opened Spotify. Anyway, while that's loaded out the background. Then another thing is that so that I have that architect cross, ah, uh, Architect cross um, lines or sketchy lines. I just move this forward a bit. Then, so that that line will come out. Then I load this in the project. So this is what I normally use for. Yes, so this, this, this is how I like my view. You know, templates would be like, you get. So, let's remove this. So, I mean, when we do our title block, we will just do another class for title block. We'll load it and replace this. Like I said, for now, we can leave that. So, wall tag and window tags are something that are subject to change or 
like when we agree on the, the symbol we're going to be using so that's pretty much for revit templates so like i said when you open your template you let me delete all this oh no no sorry another thing i didn't do was the wall so i want to make the wall so i practice in lagos nigeria so we normally use 230 walls so let's use with 232 two to five as per dimension but we just use two thirds i think it's easier when you add it i don't even know why i'll find out but i know i learned i started to use that two thirty when i went for my it so we normally use two thirty blocks and we normally leave space for uh, what they call it for plaster or for rendering as the case may be so now the issue with that or i don't have an issue with it but i feel like that doesn't really show on small scale so sometimes i don't even because it makes it kind of hard when you're dimensioning you have to tap to you get the core of the wall but let's just go around it and, and and delve into that and do that so this is basically to just create your your template so that when you load the wall it already has the material so if we come here we change this thickness to 230 then in this We'll click on this guy since i'm not rendering i won't bother about what it looks like in terms of appearance so i click on d so that i change the default wall so that i'm done with it once and for all then i don't surface like i said i'm not rendering so i don't really know i don't really or i surface does not really matter to me because it has to be blank anyway so i want to just change the cut pattern so if we scroll down to the cut pattern so the foreground I want it to be this guy is really very small so from experience so if we say choose this guy I'll definitely come and edit it so usually make it like 0 0.5 or thereabouts then another thing is that I make this gray I use this gray for it so that it doesn't it's not too loud we get and this would only show in your in your if you choose um it's on course now on course so if you change it to fine that's when we we'll see it yeah so this is fine so then i can put the plaster so if i take this guy up Put the second plaster, take it down. So, yeah, so we give it a thickness of 15. So I'm putting 12.5, but I feel 15 is just, just works well. So if I, okay, it's, so like I said, you really don't see it. I mean, when you do this with Revit, you can see it and all, and stuff, but you get to really appreciate this when you are doing your, when you are doing your details, say your 200 series or 500 series, depending on how you do that. So also, yeah, let me know your series. If you work with series, what series you use in your office or for your own personal practice and all. So if we come here, this has the shade, the hatch pattern that I don't like. So I want to remove it. So I'll create a new material. So I'll rename it. I right click I rename it uh, call it plaster sorry mm -hmm. yeah so this is fine I just leave it like that so I copy this ctrl C and I oops sorry that's what I wanted to do ctrl V So, we've removed the hatch from that. So, this is for the wall. So, for floors and for other materials, we can edit down as per project. So, so, this is just your basic Revit template. So, now if you really want to go deep in it, 
say you want to really have this thing to really be you and you your presets you now start to load in components that you normally use like doors windows and all this kind of stuff then you save it so once you save it when next you open your revit all these are already preloaded so since i'm not working with this i'm not working with this and i'm not working with this so that the file is not heavy you do this you do this you know so now we've done what we did we changed this we changed this we also changed the the what they call it the i mean we went one by one picked up all the things we think we would need and we edited that and if we are satisfied with all this then we can we can save and we can you know close it and let me show you how to load it i'll just close all this family that I was editing which i did not close when i was doing them i don't want to save so that i don't mess up with revit default you know we've already loaded it in our project so that's good so let me know what you think about this class let me know if it was something if it was helpful if you learned anything or if you feel like i was doing something that i could do it better i'm happy to learn from you i'm happy to hear your feedback on that i'm just closing all this stuff that i opened up no biggie and i'm not saving so that i don't mess with so if we come to new you see it's not here so we can add it here or we could browse but let's just browse now and open it so i remember i saved it in my document i will remove it from there yeah so this is it Revit guys templates so we now have a template file that we can use so when you open it for your next project you can see everything that we did is here our font is here our choice of font this year and everything so next time when you want to work on the project you just move on straight up so okay yeah so to always have this on the drop down if you want to open a new project so that you have your template that you've saved there you know so that you don't have to go and search for it um let's just open a new project uh, let's say this i just want to do so i can come to the file so if you go to file and we go to options and we go to file locations then under this place we just click the add button we add this guy to it and we okay so next time when you want to open a new file you now have your revit guys templates so for the purpose of this class i think we've ended so the next class would be will be you no know, um creating our title blocks editing our title block that should not take long then we would just work on the design and just you know do some other stuff to make it look good when i mean stuff i mean damage oh sorry there's something i did not i did not do very important in this in this um in this revit file which which i should have which have been the first thing that i should have done which is uh yeah you yeah, i'm very sorry for that is the elevation sorry the dimension so this should be change the text to swiss i don't like but well, so sometimes you can leave this as opaque so opaque what it does is that it has this white like white box rectangle around it so i leave it sometimes and i will show you when i leave it uh, when we are doing the dimension so make this transparent text offset from the leader i like 0 0.5 or 1.5 one of them yeah this is fine then i make it bold then i also 
make it fixed dimension line. Make this 1.5. Yeah. So this is fine. Then this guy sometimes can be sticking out like a sore thumb. Just be big sometimes. This guy, this tick. So if you want to reduce this tick, so if you click on dimension, sorry, if you go to manage additional settings, arrowheads, first of all, to show you what we are looking for, if you click on the dimension and you come here, we know that the, the, um, what was the word now? The tick, the dimension tick tick mark is diagonal 3 mm so that's what i want to change that's this guy sometimes it could be very long if you've used Revit for a long time you know what i'm talking about so if you go to manage additional settings and you come to arrowhead we change this to we change this to where's it again diagonal 3 mm i'll make it one 1.5 so yeah we've reduced it so you can make it smaller or if you don't like this tick there are a couple other options for you to choose from um so you can make it if this is what you want you can have it if this is what you want you can have it but as an architect, this is what we are taught to use. So, go back to that. Then, or uh, so some people use this field dot three mm. Maybe it makes it work neater. But I like this, and I like the weight. So the weight is the thickness of the line. So if you make it five, obviously it will be thicker and stuff. So, I think that's all for this class. So see you in the next class so if you enjoyed the class or if you don't enjoy it you want to enjoy it you can suggest on what i can do to make it enjoyable to make it more pleasant so i'd like you to subscribe like share comment and i'll see you guys next time peace